Hello everybody. In this video I'm going to show you how to run a multiple regression analysis using Sigma Excel for Mac. Multiple regression analyzes the relationship between one dependent variable and multiple independent variables. It is used to discover the relationship between the variables and create an empirical equation of the form shown on the screen. This equation can be used to predict a y value for a given set of input x values. Sigma Excel uses the method of least squares to solve for the model coefficient and constant term. Statistical tests of hypothesis are provided for the model coefficients. Now for this example, we're going to be using one of our sample data sets called Customer Data, which is available in Sigma Excel's installation directory. So simply open the data set. And once the data set is open, you're going to click on the Sigma Excel menu, click Statistical Tools, select Regression, and we are going to click on Multiple Regression. Make sure all of your data is selected and click Next. Now as your numeric response Y, select Overall Satisfaction, and as your continuous predictors, select Responsive to Calls and Ease of Communication. Now make sure that Fit Intercept is checked, and Display Residual Plots as shown. Now click OK, and you'll see the resulting multiple regression report is shown. This model of overall satisfaction as a function of responsiveness to calls and ease of communications looks very good with an R-square value of 90%. Both predictors are shown to be significant with their respective p-values less than 0.05. Clearly, we need to focus on these two x factors to improve customer satisfaction. The variance inflation factor and tolerance scores are used to measure multicollinearity or correlation among predictors. A variance inflation factor equal to 1 indicates no relation among the predictors, which is highly desirable. A variance inflation factor of greater than 1 indicates that the predictors are correlated, and a variance inflation factor of greater than 5 indicates that the regression coefficients are strongly correlated, and this will lead to poor estimates of the coefficients. The tolerance equals 1 divided by the variance inflation factor. The Durbin-Watson test is used to determine if the residuals are autocorrelated. If either p-value is less than 0.05, then there is significant autocorrelation. This is likely due to an external bias factor affecting your process over time. For example, a warm-up effect or seasonality. This will also be evident in the plots of residuals versus observation order. Autocorrelation in the residuals is not a problem for this model. A predicted response calculator, shown here, allows you to enter x values and obtain the predicted response value including the 95% confidence interval for the long-term mean and 95% prediction interval for individual values. Now if we click the sheet called Malt Reg Residuals, we'll see the residuals plots, if I scroll to the right here. Now residuals are the unexplained variation from the regression model. We expect to see the residuals normally distributed with no obvious patterns in the graph shown. Clearly this is not the case here with the residuals versus predicted values indicating there is likely some other X factor influencing the overall satisfaction. It would be appropriate to consider other factors in the model. Now we're going to rerun multiple regression, this time adding a categorical predictor. So you can either press F3 to bring back the multiple regression tool, or go back to statistical tools, select regression, and multiple regression. So as before, I'm going to select overall satisfaction as the Y, responsive to calls and ease of communication as my continuous predictors. However, this time I am going to add customer type as a categorical predictor, uh, and this time you can uncheck display residuals plots. Now once again we get the resulting multiple regression report, and the parameter estimates table now includes customer type 2 and customer type 3, but where is customer type 1? Since customer type is a discrete predictor, Sigma Excel applies dummy coding. Now in the predicted response calculator, enter the settings as shown. For responsive to calls, enter a value of 5. For ease of communication, enter a value of 5. Customer type 2, a value of 1. And for customer type 3, a value of 0. Now note that for customer type 1, you would enter customer type 2 equals 0 and customer type 3 equals 0. For customer type 2, as shown, you would enter customer type 2 equals 1 and customer type 3 equals 0. And lastly, for customer type 3, you would enter customer type 2 equals 0 and customer type 3 equals 1. 